church. How are you guys doing? Good. Thanks for coming out in this rain. Yeah, look at you guys. So isn't that awesome seeing how much our youth has been doing in this church this past year? Yeah. All right. Well, this Sabbath, for those of you who don't know, is Global Youth Day. So this is a a Sabbath that we're going to use to celebrate our youth in this church. You know, and on behalf of Youth Ministries, we're so excited that we have such a vibrant group that is growing. Man, we have massively grown in the past year. And, you know, we got a lot of activities, a lot of things going on for our youth. And, and, you know, it's a special thing to have the youth involved because they truly are uh, the future of this church, specifically our church here. You know, I think it's something that we need to foster as a church, and we're doing a great job of doing that. So for today, there's a couple big announcements um, about um, AY. So first off, we are having our first potluck since 2019, I think. Is that right? Yeah, since 2019. Yeah, exciting. So we're going to get together. We're going to have some food, socialize, and hang out in the fellowship hall immediately after church. Um, The second thing for Youth Day, we are going to Siena Apartments uh, Nurse Gnome visit after potluck at 2.30. For those of you who want to be lame and not come with us to Potluck, you can meet us at the apartments at 2.30. But if you want to hang out for Potluck, we're going right after that. And it's at Sienna Apartments. Any other details, you can refer to my mom, Sheila Martin. She'll be able to give you guys the address. The third thing, we do have our monthly uh, prayer meeting this coming Friday um, on the 25th at 6 p.m. here at this church. And from what I've been hearing, it's been um, a big blessing for all those who are attending. And obviously, you know, prayer is a super important part of this church and a big focus uh, that we're putting on this year. Um, And a shout out for our Inverse Sabbath School. We do that every week at 1030, but realistically, we probably get started at 1045. Um, right? <laughs> That's exactly. So um, it's been a real, real blessing for our young adults and our youth that have been here. And it's for anyone 20 to young at heart. And I'm not putting a limit on that. It's anybody who, who wants a, a slightly different take on the adult lesson. Um, it's been a real blessing to us. And we meet every week at 1030 here in the side room. Or 930. Sorry, you're right. It's not 1030. 1030 we start here. 930. Um, and then our next AY meeting, we've been doing these monthly. Um, today's, this month's AY meeting is because we're doing the Global Youth Day. It's going to be here with potluck and the singing. But our next month, April 19, put it on your calendars. We're doing our next AY meeting. Uh, we're still hammering out the details, but tentatively we're going to do a beach day in the afternoons at our place out on the beach. So more information for that coming up. And then there are several other announcements in the bulletin. You guys just refer to that um, for all the extra announcements. So those are the highlights we want to meet today. 
Okay, we are going to, there's one more announcement that I did not get to Jake, um, but it's very important. We need volunteers for the benefit for the hungry. It's going to be on April 3, and so please see Sharon. We need about 35 volunteers, so see Sharon if you're interested in helping with that. We are going to have a dedication prayer, and I'm going to let Mr. Jake stay here for just a minute to represent our youth um, for us and the leadership that they have shown in our church and the future that they present. And so we want to bow our heads at this time. We're going to have a special dedication to God for our youth who are having our service today. Our dear Father in heaven, we thank you today, especially on this International Day of Youth, that we have such a dynamic and growing and important part of our church as the youth have shown uh, in the last months. And we ask that you would put a special blessing on the leadership of these young people, the music that they've given, the ministry, the teaching, and the. we just ask that you'd help and uh, put your blessing on this future of our church in Panama City and around the world. And so we ask that you would dedicate them, each one, today uh, to the service in your, work, in your work. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Good morning, Panama City Saints. Good morning. Happy Is Sabbath. anybody grateful this morning? Amen. Let us Victory. all sing together to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, above all powers. Above all thrones, Jesus is seated, and we worship his name this Sabbath morning. Let us all sing together this beautiful song, Above All. We sing together, saints. Do we all believe this biblical truth that Jesus is above all things? Amen. Yes. Amen. Let us sing together, filled with joy, filled with the blessing of the Holy Spirit in our lives. And we sing together loud and strong. Amen. Amen. Today is Global Youth Day, and we celebrate together. See ya.
Goodbye. God, he thought of us, and we are grateful because he paid the price, the penalty for sin. Now we sing together, Hosanna. Hosanna is a beautiful word that we all uh, proclaim our, our King Jesus, and we sing together this song in adoration to Christ. So let us sing loud and strong, Hosanna, as we move forward in our worship service. There's a lot of evidence that Christ died for us on the cross. And we sing together this song just to be reminded of this precious work of Christ for us. So let us all sing together a loud and strong, I see. I see the King of glory coming on the cloud. second coming. Can I get a witness? Yes. Now we all sing together Hosanna in the highest.
one more time we sing. Did you guys catch, there was one verse in that song they just said, it said, I see a new generation rising up to take the place with selfless faith. You know, that is what we are actually um, honoring here today. There is something new that we're doing in this church. We are choosing youth in this church that have been selfless in their faith, selfless in their sacrifice. And we're going to start you know, yearly recognizing them. And we're going to recognize uh, the first people today. So first off, I want to invite the pastor and our um, Elder Ron up front. Yeah, to read the, to read the plaque. We've got that. So it says, in appreciation of your commitment to the work of the Lord. So I'm going to have the first one's going to James Vickers. Everybody knows James. Yeah, absolutely. I think James spends almost as much time up here than anybody. I mean, he's here till 9 o'clock last night. He's here all the time. You guys, he's behind the scenes. But man, this church would not operate without him. That's for sure. And we are more than thankful to have James. And our uh, second word here going to Vanessa. He's going to Vanessa. Vanessa, where are you at? I saw you a second ago. I know she's here. There she is. Come on, Vanessa. Come up front. This is your award. So Vanessa, we have been so blessed to have her from Jamaica. She's been very, very active in our AY group. She's helped to organize. She's helped uh, to run skits, our drama. Um, so we're going to bring her forward and recognize her today. Denise, if you, if you would stay here for a, minute, for a moment. Let us pray for our youth. Amen? Amen? Let's pray for them one more time. If you guys can get closer, let us pray together. Um, Heavenly Father, as we move forward in this service, we stop for a minute just to recognize the great blessings and the many gifts and talents that you have provided for our youth here in Panama City. We pray, Lord, for their lives. We pray for their commitment, especially for both James and Vanessa. Continue to... Um, Move in them the passion to work for you, Lord, the passion to continue to lead others to come and join us, Lord, and to work with energy, Lord, for this, for this gospel of yours. So I pray for their lives. I pray for their spiritual walk. I pray for their families. I pray, Lord, for their parents. I also pray that they would continue to serve here in this church. And I pray for all the other uh, young adults that are here represented just by them. So thank you for this opportunity. And let us move forward knowing that you are with us. It is in your name that we pray. Amen. Amen. I think there's been a mistake on the youth part, because I'm probably the oldest one in the church. But today's uh, <clears throat> tithes and offering are for the local church budget. Psalms 18, 2 reads, The Lord is my rock, my fortress and my deliverer. My God is my rock, in whom I take refuge, my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. We worship God with our resources because he is our sure deliverer. From his anointing, when he was around 15 until his old age, King David had a long and perilous journey through many dangers. To name a few, there were the lions, the bears, Goliath the giant, 
Saul the envious king, and Absalom the overly ambitious son. For being kept safe, David burst into praises, worshiping God as the rock, the fortress, and the deliverer. The God of David is no less active today. Do you think that the deliverer deserves our full worship? This week, through our tithes and regular offerings, we can worship the great deliverer. Will the deacons come forward? Lord, we thank you for being our rock, fortress, and deliverer. Help us rest before travel and be alert on the roads. Accept our praises as we honor you with our resources. Hi, church. Good morning. So we're going to have a special moment right now where there's a lot of, you know, us praying for our youth and young adults, but in the spirit of our young adults taking that step and being the leaders of our church, um, we want to pray for you. So you're going to see four of our youth leaders in this church, and they're going to take a moment and just pray. You'll see them around the church. I see them going into their positions. So we're just going to take a moment and we're going to be praying for our church a couple minutes and you can bow your heads and pray with us and then I'll close us out. Church, let's pray together. Dear Lord, thank you for the opportunity we have today to come together and focus specifically on our youth and what we can do for you and the future of this church and this world as our song said as we work on walking from earth to eternity with you, Lord, which is our ultimate goal. So be with us. Keep us focused on you um, and the future and what we can do for you. Amen. Good morning, Panama City Saints. Well, we just want to take a moment just to say welcome. And um, if you are a member of this church, would you please rise for a moment? Let's do it this way, this time around. Rise for a moment, Panama City Saints. Now uh, that we are all rise, look around you, right? And if someone is not uh, up, that means that he or she is not a member of this church. So go around and just say hi and happy Sabbath to uh, this community of saints. <laughs> welcome, welcome guys. Welcome, 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 welcome. Is anybody blessed this morning? Can we get an amen? amen. Can we get a hallelujah? hallelujah? Can we get a glory be to God? It is such a delight to be in the house of the Lord, just like the psalmist rejoice in that fact. We rejoice that this Sabbath morning we are here. So if you are visiting for the first or second time our Panama City SDA Church, we are grateful. We are joyful that you are here with us. Also to our online audience, thank you so much for being there today in this Global Youth Day. And we know that there's a great blessing of the Lord that is for us this morning. So thank you for being there. If if you are a Facebook user, what do you have to do? Like. You have to like, and what else? Oh. Like and share, okay? Like and share. Uh, the more you like and the more you share, then the more we're able to grow our influence and communicate this gospel of Christ uh, to the world. So thank you so much for doing this and welcome to our online audience. Moving forward, I will also like to share with you the last um, Sabbath afternoon, we had a great blessing, a preaching seminar here. We talked about different aspects of biblical preaching. Uh, here we have are uh, 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 preachers and teachers of the word and students of the word. It was a great experience just to uh, communicate to each other and, 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 and uh, discuss helpful tips and, and things that you can incorporate into your teaching, uh, preaching, and also studying of the word of God. This was last week, and we had such a great blessing, a great moment of instruction, because here in the Pan Panama City uh, Church, we equipped. Everybody say equipped. Equipped. 
Remember that the vision for 2022 is we connect, we equip, and we grow. This is part of our equipment to our Panama City Saints, the um, preaching seminar that we had last week. Also, just so you know, we are going to have our communion service in April the 2nd, okay? Communion service. There's something um, special about this community uh, communion service, uh, and that, that is that the Shilson Trail Academy Choir is coming that Sabbath morning, and they are going to be with us. We are expecting a large group of people here in our sanctuary. It is it's a great choir. They have performed in important uh, um, um, locations uh, throughout the country, and they go on tour. And they are going to be with us April the 2nd. So we come in the morning. They are going to perform probably once or twice. We go into the communion service. We celebrate that sp a spiritual blessing together. And then in the afternoon at 5 p.m., we come and we celebrate and partake of uh, the choir that will be with us here in town. Also later today, we have potluck. I cannot wait for the potluck, okay? Is anybody excited for the potluck? Yes. It's been uh, probably six months or so since we had our last uh, potluck. It's been a great, a great battle. And finally, the Lord has made a way to allow us to have our potluck. Today, everyone is invited. Also, uh, at 2.30, we are all invited to go to the nursing home uh, to celebrate also Global Youth Day and to spend time with these people as we celebrate this topic of loving the forgotten, loving the forgotten. Last but not least, we had a great blessing of, in our prayer meeting last Wednesday at 6.30 a.m. Everybody, when I, when I say 6.30 a.m., I hope that you can see what I'm seeing from here. Everybody's faces went like, 6.30? Yes, 6.30. So I hope that you can be here, make it possible. We had a great uh, prayer meeting last week, and we have two more. This coming Wednesday and the following Wednesday. It's only 45 minutes from 6.30 to 7.15 or so, and we enjoy of that great blessing together. Remember, we connect, we equip, and we grow. Let's say that together. One, two, and three. We connect, we equip, and we grow. Now, last but not least, this morning we have a family of members of our church who have requested a ceremony of dedication. And uh, we couldn't be more excited. Josie Diane Martin is uh, going to be dedicated before the Lord. And there's a huge difference between presenting a child, a child before the Lord and dedicating a child before the Lord. Jesus was dedicated. When a family of believers comes and dedicate a child, that's a great blessing. So we are celebrating with the Martins this great opportunity, the gift of life. So I'd like to invite uh, Josie's parents, Jacob and Annie, to join me here in the front. Also Shiloh, if you can come here to the front. I would like uh, also to invite uh, all the family and friends. Uh, that are present here to come here to the pulpit with me, the rest of the family, and Sister Sheila Martin as a representative of our children's ministry department. She's going to be joining us here as well, as, as, uh, and also the rest of the family. And also Elder Roberto Diaz will be here representing our, uh, our team of elders right here. So just like I, I always say, guys. Hey, Dave. How are you? Happy to see you. Happy to see you. So just like I always say, dedicating a child before the Lord is a great blessing and a great responsibility, okay? A great blessing and a great responsibility. You guys know this, okay? The blessing is that this child from now on belongs to the Lord, right? And your responsibility is to uh, raise her in a godly home where prayers are uh, often raised, where, where they are able to learn about God's word. So I am going to just go ahead and um, I don't know if Sister Sheila has a certificate here for us. We are going to say uh, or do a couple of things to represent or to symbolize this great blessing of the baby dedication here. Right here, I do have some ink. Is baby approved? So don't worry. And it's easily removed, right? So I'm going to take, let's let's do the hand. The hand. Let's do it. Let's do it. No, okay. You want to, okay. Let's do the, the okay. Okay, here we go. Okay. Here we go. Okay. Ooh. She moved it. I think so. It is in there. Yeah. Okay. There we go. 
As you can see, this is just a small symbol of how wherever life may, life may take uh, Josie, she will be grounded in Scripture. Amen? She will be grounded in the Word of God. You can hold this right here. Also, I do have for you a, a letter that is dated January 10th, 2037. Why that date is important, that's when Josie is going to be 15 years of age. And this letter is a reminder from the Panama City Church family of what took place here this morning. Isn't that a blessing? Amen. Annie, you cannot open this letter. Okay? Don't do it. Just keep it, keep it there somewhere. And this is just a letter from your Panama City uh, Church family. Also, we are going to hold the baby and then we're going to have a word of prayer. And uh, we celebrate the gift of life with you guys. I'm going to ask Elder Diaz to hold the mic here. Um, we're going to kneel up here in the pulpit. You guys can remain seated. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, what a great joy to come before you to celebrate the gift of life. Amen. We are grateful because you have blessed the Martin family with a new family member. We pray and we cover with the blood of Jesus, Josie Martin. You've conceived her even before she was in her mother's womb, Lord, and now we know that you're going to keep her safe, that you're going to keep her safe mentally, physically, spiritually, spiritually, Lord. And we pray that as we give her back to you, she's able to grow to be a godly woman, someone that is grounded in Scripture, someone who is a faithful Christian, someone that is a joy to be around and that is getting ready to go to heaven to celebrate eternity with you. So we pray for Annie and Jacob. We pray for the Martin family. Continue to bless them in abundance. So that Josie, along with Shiloh and the rest of uh, the children, they are able to enjoy your presence every day of their lives. That not weapon that is formed against them may prevail. And that they are able to celebrate the fact that you are for them. That you may never leave them nor forsaken them. So we pray and we dedicate before you this child in the same way that Jesus was. It is in his name that we pray. Amen, amen. and amen. Young people from Tyler, Texas, are supposed to sing today, but two of them, uh, Eileen and what's her name? Alana, had a fever. They wake me up at 5 o'clock this morning that they could not sing. So the gospel family is always be ready, you know. <laughs> but I'm not a youth. I'm the, I'm the youngest one of here. I'm the grandma, great grandma. I'm young at heart, though. beyond measure and by his strength alone I overcome Oh, oh I, I could stop and count successes like diamonds in my hand But those trophies could not equal to the grace by which I stand Christ 
to my need. Now I seek no greater honor than just to know Him more and to count my gains but losses to the glory of the Lord. In Christ alone I place my trust Religious bondage, hopelessness, lack of interest in holiness, a fault finding spirit, spiritual dullness, disobedience, doubt, absence of joy, a stir of emotions can be used to chronicle the feeling of Christine. She was beginning to doubt her faith and was slowly wandering away from God. Now, before we can look at her adult life, let's take a stroll down Mary Lane and examine her life as a teen. Nestled in the vibrant village of Bethel, a young lady by the name of Christine resides with her family. Now, Christine was not your average young adult. She was an errant Sabbath school superintendent and an active churchgoer. She was cheerful and pleasant and always eager to offer a kind word. She understood the importance of a greeting and always maintained a cheerful disposition as she would greet everyone she came in contact with. Her faith was seemingly steadfast and unwavering. This devoted Christian had an unyielding desire to walk with God and grow old in him. She understood that there is a great joy in serving Jesus as there is no greater companion to embark on life's spiritual journey. As Christine grew into adulthood, her faith was beginning to fade. Her hope now seemed glim, and her beloved church no longer seemed to be a place of refuge or a light of love. Her daily communion with God was now taking a back seat as her day-to-day -day rituals was now a primary importance. The curiosity of what the journey would be like on the other side was now increasing since a Christian route was no longer fun, entertaining, or exciting. What she didn't realize was she was re regressing spiritually and her doubt was leading to a spiritual dullness. You see, at the time, what Christine didn't know was that prayer is the most spiritual weapon in this world and that Christians do not take full advantage of the power of prayer God has given to us. Instead of talking to God and confiding in him, she started talking to all the wrong people. Confidante, she had none. But what she heard was rumors and murmurs from her close Christian friends. 
And soon enough, her spiritual journey took a detour to a dangerous route. Christine was becoming less involved in God's word and more involved in the attraction of the world. She started skipping church services, and before you know it, she began regressing into spiritual dreariness. It was not long before she started going to events where God would not approve. The Christian journey seemed monotonous, but the, the other route led to apparent fun and enjoyment. In church, all she perceived was hatred and backbiting, so she wandered onto the other route and found friends she could confide in and who showed her constant love. What she didn't realize was that the further she drew from God, the closer she got to the devil. She leaned on her own strength and not the strength of the spirit of the living God. One day, Christine was invited by a friend to attend a party. However, it was on a Friday night, and without giving it much thought, she agreed. Prior to this, she began attending similar events with the same group of friends, but never on a Friday night. Christine and her friends had a grand Friday evening together, or at least so she thought. They were all dancing, smoking, drinking, and having the time of their lives. Although she was usually timid to try alcohol that night, she delved right in and thought to herself, this is what life is really about. One of her friends was heard saying, we are having the best time of our lives. She nodded in agreement while dancing to a hip song. The drive back home was spent in boisterous laughter as a group of five reminisced on the evening activities, making solemn pledges to do all again the next week. The driver was joining in, joining in on the fun and would frequently look away from the road at the trio in the back seat of the car that were mimicking their previous dance moves. As they were approaching a traffic light, the green hue reflected on the front of the car, and never wanting to miss the action, the driver thought it was safe to glance at the back seat once more. As the driver returned his attention to the front view, it was too late, and the car plummeted into an approaching vehicle, and at all that was heard was a long screech and a loud bang. Where is the defilibrator? The unknown voice shouted. One, two, three, clear. Wait, she's awake. No, how could this be? She has been out for 10 minutes now. The truth of the matter is that when a patient comes into the emergency room without a heartbeat, they are technically dead, said the guy in the white blood stained scrubs. Well, this one is a fighter. She's back with us. Dizziness, fatigue, fright, nausea can only be used to capture Christine's feeling. What Christine later found out was that she was rescued by the job. By the laws of life and all her friends did not make it. She was even more depressed to know that there's a family of four in the other vehicle that did not survive the accident either. The roller coaster ride on the other side did not live up to the hype. For the first time since being in the other route, she began to see the hurt she was causing others by her actions. Her poor lifestyle choices left her in financial stress, and soon enough, she began longing for more. She hoped for the warm feeling she felt when communing with believers of God. She knew where she can get true healing, physical and spiritual restoration. Soon enough, as soon as she recovered, she made her way to church. As she approached the big wooden door, she hesitated, she thought. Should I come back? How would people think view me now? Lord, I'm not worthy. And then she heard another voice saying, My child, take this journey with me. Come back home. There is plenty of room, so get on board. Lord, I'm not worthy to be called your child. Lay it all at the feet of Jesus. Get on board. Christine was coming to Jesus, but she had baggage. 
The load, the load was a setback. It was making the journey long and tiresome. So she began to take out her load, one by one, and as she was taking the load off, she got new strength and energy to persevere. Selfishness, backbiting, jealousy, unfriendliness, hatred, strife, um, unfriendliness, uh, hatred, <coughs> strife, <coughs> bitterness, okay. anger. As she knelt at the foot of the altar, she heard the words, your verdict is not guilty. That day, she heard a soul-steering sermon and recommitted her life to Jesus. The message brought new meaning to her life, and it went a little like this. Have you ever wandered far away from God? Well, now it is time to come home. Christine had a heavy load and lots of baggage, and more and more, she would wander far away from God. What baggage are you taking on your spiritual journey? Leave it at the altar today. Have you been in church regularly and you are still wandering far away from God? It is time to come home. At times, we may feel discouraged and that no one is there and no one cares about us. But no matter how far you are from God, you can never be too far where, you can, where he cannot reach you. Have you wandered away from him? Then take the Christian journey. I would like to present to you a man who was born in an obscure village, the child of a peasant woman. He grew up in another village. He worked in a carpenter shop until he was 30. Then for three years, he was a nomad and an interrant preacher. He never owned a home. He never wrote a book. He never held an office. He never went to college. He never put his foot inside a big city. He, his only credential was himself. While still a young man, the tide of popular opinion turned against him. His friends went away. One of them denied him. He was turned over to his enemies. He went to the mockery of a trial. He was nailed to upon a cross between two thieves. While he was dying, his executioners gambled for the only piece of property he had on earth, his coat. When he was dead, he laid in a borrowed grave through the pity of a friend. 19 long centuries of come and gone, and today he is a centerpiece of the human race and leader of the column of progress. I am far within the mark when I say all the armies that ever marched, all the cities that were ever built, all the governments that ever sat, and all the kings that ever reigned, put together, has not affected the life of a man upon this earth as powerfully as the one solitary life, Jesus Christ. Always remember, when you have nothing left but God, God is enough. And when you are down to nothing, God is up to something. No matter your circumstance, he is saying to you today, get on board, there's room. morning saints would you stand with me for a moment and let us have a word of prayer <clears throat> heavenly father as we open up your word we ask for quietness we ask for the illumination of your holy spirit and we ask for you to speak to us. Thank you for the blessing of having you present in this sanctuary. And thank you for everyone here and for everyone watching. It is in your name that we pray. Amen. You may be seated. We are going to read the gospel according to John chapter 5 and verse 16. So please turn to John 5, 16. John 5, 16. 
Feel free to grab a Bible from the pew in front of you or, or, or also follow along up in the screen. As you can see, John chapter 5 and verse 16, the Word of God says, Therefore, the Jews began persecuting Jesus because he was doing these things on the Sabbath. But Jesus responded to them, My Father is still working. And I am working also. This is why the Jews began trying all the more to kill him. Not only was he breaking the Sabbath, but he was even calling God his own father, making himself equal with God. Saints, this text is full of problems. This is a problematic text. There are at least two assertions in this text that may be problematic to the Jewish mind. On the Sabbath day, Jesus went up to Jerusalem to the pool called Bethesda and found a large number of sick, blind, lame, and paralyzed people. It was the popular belief that an angel came and, and would go down into the pool and stir up the water. You know the story. Then the first one to get in the water would recover whatever, from whatever illness he may have. So Jesus addressed a man who was sick for how long? For how long? 38 years. Everybody say 38. 38 years. He addressed this man and told him, pick up your mat and walk. This man was accused by the Jews because he was breaking the Sabbath rest. And they wanted to get to the bottom of this matter. So they wanted to find out who was behind this blasphemous act of defiance. Who gave you the, 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 the word so that you can pick up your mat. Why is it that you are doing this? Why is it that you are breaking the Sabbath rest? So some time later, Jesus found the same man in the temple and told him, See, you are well. Do not sin anymore. This is what Jesus told him. So the man went and reported to the Jews that Jesus was the one who healed him on the Sabbath and endorsed his carrying of the mat. As a result of such an incident, the Jews started persecuting Jesus. They wanted to put an end to this nonsense. It was clearly stated in the law of Moses that anyone who worked on the Sabbath day must be executed. So the first problem revealed in the text is Jesus' apparent breaking of the Sabbath rest. That's the first problem. Jesus is seen to be breaking the Sabbath rest. Now, the second problem arises when the Jews address Jesus, asking for an explanation of his actions. And his response is even more troubling than the breaking of the Sabbath itself. When approached by the Jews, Jesus could have started a theological debate. Don't you think? He could have started a theological debate on the proper way of keeping the Sabbath. He could have argued that with their additions and legalistic approach, they have made the Sabbath a burden rather than a delight. He could have gone there and give reasons why they were wrong and he was right. He could have clarified that the prophets Jeremiah and Nehemiah were against the carrying of commercial goods in the Sabbath day and not personal belongings. He could have argued that and, and, and let them know that he understood what he was doing, but he didn't do that. He did not go there. Instead, he used this accusation as the starting point to clarify a deeper issue. Everybody say deeper issue. A deeper issue. He used this accusation to introduce a long discourse in regards to his person, who he was, and his work, what he came to do. So he said to the Jews, 
My Father is still working, and I am working also. Glory be to God. My Father is still working, and I am working also. Therefore, the first problem in the text is Jesus' apparent breaking of the Sabbath. And the second problem is that Jesus is claiming equality with God the Father. This is a problematic text for the Jewish mind. Last Tuesday, Tuesday afternoon, I had an opportunity to go out with a group of members of our church that goes downtown to feed the homeless. We were here at 4.30 p.m. We met here in the parking lot. And we loaded the car with lunch bags and went on the road. It was such a great blessing to interact with people who benefited from a simple yet significant meal. Most of them were open to praying with us. But that was not the case with someone in particular. When we arrived in a community of small one-bedroom apartments for people in need, we started going around distributing the lunch bags. So I came to a half door that was open, and then I knocked. And I said, hello, sir. Would you like a lunch bag? The gentleman respond, or replied, sure, why not? Then I inquired for his name. He not only told me his name, but he also went on to complain about uh, what, about the, the bad day that he was having. He was having such a bad day, so he went on to complain about, it, about that. So I explained that it just started to get better because now he had a meal that he could enjoy. And he smiled. He quietly agreed to that comment of the day getting better. And then I said, do you know that despite all of your current circumstances, God loves you? He made a weird sound mm, and turned away his face in disbelief. Then I asked him, would you give me the opportunity to pray with you? He responded with disdain, saying, I do not believe in God. I do believe that Jesus once was some sort of gifted master, but he was not the son of a God in heaven. So I do not believe in prayer. We might be tempted to believe that this gentleman has an issue with the love of God. We might be inclined to imagine that he has an issue with prayer, and this may be true in the surface. But the bigger issue with this gentleman resides in his Christology. The bigger issue here, the deeper component is his Christology. How you see Christ is going to inform your view on the love of God. How you see Christ is going to affect his heavenly sanctuary priesthood. And how you view the end time events. How you see Christ is going to affect your view of justification, sanctification, and salvation. How you see Christ is going to inform your theology altogether. Your Christology informs what you believe, how you interact, how you do Christian. Christology was the deeper issue with this gentleman I met. It was the deeper issue with the Jews in John chapter 5. And it might be the deeper issue to many of us here that our Christian walk has become trite, burdensome. People have a tendency to either misunderstand Christ or take for granted who He is. And what he came to do. His person and his work. His person and his work. Now, since there's a problem with our Christology, 
and our understanding of Christianity is based on our Christology, we are going to take some time to prove Jesus' person, who he is. And we are going to take some time to explain what he came to do, his work. Are you guys in agreement? Let's talk about his person. Let's talk about his work. A proof of his sonship as the second person of the Trinity is not only presented to the persecuting Jews, but also throughout the New Testament. Think about it for a minute. Jesus claimed to be the Son of God on several occasions, and this bold claim was accepted by all of his disciples. Imagine this. If you're walking with, with, with this guy, and he's saying that he is the Son of God, and he doesn't have any way to back this up, wouldn't you go away a from the presence of, of this lunatic? You would leave and for sure you would not be able to die for that cause. None of the New Testament authors believed that Jesus was a gifted Galilean with special insights in the ways of God. The phrase, he was sent by the Father. He was sent by the Father is repeated at least 40 times in the Gospel of John alone. He was sent by the Father. So saints of God... Every time that we say the word Christ, what we are saying is that Jesus is the word that became flesh and dwelt among us. Every time that we say the word Christ, we are agreeing with the fact that he is the way and the truth and the life. Christ is the anointed one. It is he, the Messiah, the one specially set aside for a particular task. Christ, his person. Now, this particular task, his work, is also explained to the Jews who were persecuted him in John chapter 5. In biblical time, times, the overwhelming majority of sons ended up vocationally doing the same that their father did. Like father, like son was the cultural assumption, right? So, in verse 19, if you keep reading John chapter 5, you'll see that then Jesus replied, I assure you, this is important, the Son is not able to do anything on His own. This assertion is huge theologically speaking. The Son is not able to do anything on His own, but only what He sees the Father doing. For whatever the Father does, the Son also does. These things in the same way. The Bible says, For the Father loves the Son and shows Him everything He's doing, and He will show Him greater works than these, so that you may be amazed. Glory be to God. By his obedience. By his obedience to his father, doing only what God gives him to do. And saying only what God gives him to say. Jesus provided a perfect revelation of God the Father. Would you imagine how difficult it would have been for us to understand the Father if at some point Jesus would have been doing his own thing and on the other saying his own thing? And then we wouldn't have a line to determine this is the Father? No, because Jesus revealed the Father perfectly and ultimately and totally. Totally, we understand that whatever he did was the clear and ultimate revelation of God the Father. And I say glory be to God because this is the case. His work, his unqualified obedience to and his dependence upon his Father ensure that his revelation to us is perfect. In his person, Jesus provided the ultimate revelation of the first person of the Trinity. Therefore, he had the same authority to do his work. He is the Son. So he shared his attributes. And he has the same authority to perform his work. So this is what he came to do. 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 Christ, the anointed one. Christ, the Messiah, the only one specifically set aside for a particular task, came number one to fulfill God's promises. Everybody say God's promises. 
The Son came to fulfill God's promises. Ever since the Proto-Evangelion, and that is Genesis 3.15. We talked about this text last week. Do you remember? We talked about this text last week. God promised to bruise the enemy's head. You remember that? Ever since, since that point at the moment of the fall and continuing with the announcements of the prophets Isaiah, Daniel, Zechariah, uh, um, Jeremiah, and Micah, God promised that through the death he might destroy the one who has the power of death. And that is the devil. With death, he was, he was going to conquer death. With death, he was going to destroy the acts of death and the power of death. Jesus came to fulfill that promise of Caesar at the cross. But he not only came to fulfill the promises, he came to establish God's eternal kingdom. Amen? Fulfill the promises. Establish his kingdom. Jesus came to impart the knowledge of God the Father. He came as a servant to a world in need. Jesus came to leave you and leave me the greatest example of humility. Christ came and he claimed that his food was to do God's will. He was nourished. By this reality, he came not only to, uh, he didn't came to, 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 he didn't come to serve or to be served. He came to serve. He came to help us think of God with trust and reverence. Jesus came to heal the weak and the sick. He took our infirmities and bore our diseases, the Bible says. Jesus came to make sin sinful. Glory be to God. To show us our, great, our greatest need to produce in human beings a consciousness of guilt, repentance, faith, hope, and love. He came to let us know. He came to be a faithful and a better high priest as we are studying in our quarterly lesson. To intercede for his loved one and bless them in abundance. Panama City Saints, Jesus came to judge the world. That is true. But the climax of his work is found in the fact that he came to save sinners and gave them new life. I wholeheartedly believe that what John chapter 5 and verse 17 says is true. God the Father is still working. And Jesus is working also. Can I get an amen? amen? He continues to work even in this day and age. I believe in his person, who he is. I believe in his work, what he came to do. And I also believe in what he is doing right here, right now. God is moving in our midst. God continues to move with us. And he is able to break every chain, to be the, the, the save that we need, the salvation that we need. So let me encourage you to examine whatever issue you may be dealing with through the lens of a deeper understand of who Christ is. I encourage you to double check your Christology. Whether you are struggling to accept the love of God or you have a stagnant prayer life, whether you are consumed by the wrong decisions that you've made in your past, or you wish to know more about the heavenly sanctuary and the end time events, whether you feel a burden in your heart or you are worried about some legalistic approaches, I will encourage you to assess your Christology. Be reminded that the anointed one, the Messiah, the one specially set, set aside for a particular task of fulfilling God's promises is with us. Amen? Amen? He is with you. He is with me. He knows. 
He understands. He is with you. He will never leave you, not forsaken you. He is with you. Be reminded that the deeper issue here is whether or not you are willing to believe wholeheartedly that you do not have a high priest who is able to unsympathize with your weaknesses because he already bore your sins and nailed them to the cross. Amen? He is the Son of God. He came to save us. And He is coming back. Amen? Are you willing to believe it? Are you willing to believe it? Let's stand and have a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, as we are encouraged to trust in you, in your person and in your work, we are filled with the joy of the Holy Spirit, knowing that here in this sanctuary, right here, right now, we are going to witness firsthand what you came to do, to save sinners and get them ready to be reunited with you in heaven. Help us to enjoy this spiritual feast. It is in your name that we pray. Amen. You may be seated. What a blessing that we have already had today, haven't? Isn't that true? We've seen a baby dedicated, a new life. But this time, we want to ask Alfredo, Belinda, and Marcus to come up front here. They, these three individuals have chosen to today make a testimony before the church and before God that they would like to dedicate their lives to serving Him. And so we are going to ask you a few questions. You answer with yes. And so... Um, at this time, we would uh, ask, do you, Alfredo, Belinda, and Marcus, do you accept Jesus as your personal Savior and Lord, and do you desire to live your life in a saving relationship with Him? Yes. Amen. Do you accept the teachings of the Bible as expressed in the statement of beliefs of the Seventh-day Adventist Church? Do you pledge by God's grace to live your life in harmony with his teachings? Yes. Amen. Do you, Marcus, Alfredo, and Belinda, do you desire to be baptized as a public expression of your belief in Jesus Christ, to be accepted into fellowship of the Seventh-day Adventist Church, to support the church and its mission as a faithful steward, by your personal influence, your tithes and offerings, and your life of service. Yes. Amen. Church, you have heard the profession of faith from Alfredo, Belinda, and Marcus this morning. And at this time, pending their baptism, we would entertain a motion that they be accepted into membership of our church. Is there anybody who's willing to make such a motion? Thank you. We need a second. Is there a second? All those in favor, we ask that you would wave your right hand and say, welcome. 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 And so at this time, we're going to have a prayer of dedication for you. And we want to join with you in your testimony and in your stand. Let's bow our heads. Our Father in heaven, we bring to you three of your children this morning, and we want to dedicate them as the Panama City Seventh-day Adventist Church in their decision that they have made to publicly come before you and to be baptized this morning. We ask that you would accept their lives and guide and direct, help each member of our church to be supportive in their walk with you and help us to be together when you come. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. We are filled with joy as we see the Holy Spirit working, convincing, convicting, transforming lives. 
and drawing people, people near. We are excited to baptize three new church members. And I only can say glory be to God. Amen? Amen. Glory be to God because he's still in the business of bringing people closer, forgiving sins, providing repentance, and filling them with faith. I will to invite, go ahead in, in, in this, um, I will go ahead and invite in this Global Youth Day our first candidate. His name is Marcus Jones to come and join me here in the baptistry. God bless you, my brother. Thank you, thank you. Can we say a warm welcome to um, Marcus, right now, just lift your hands up in the air. Marcus, this is your church family. Hello. We've been studying the Bible for some time now. Marcus was born and raised in the Seventh-day Adventist church. He went to church school. He went his own way for some time. But just like the prodigal son came back and the father did not wait and ran towards him and embraced him, this morning, in the mighty name of Jesus, we celebrate that God the Father embraces his Marcus once again as he comes back home. We pray together at this time. Dear Heavenly Father, as we celebrate together this spiritual feast, our hearts are filled with joy, the joy that comes from someone who decides to renounce to the sinful ways of this world and come back to be in fellowship with you. We pray for Marcus, his spiritual journey. We pray for the conviction that you've placed in his heart. I pray, Lord, that you would continue to encourage him to give him, Lord, the energy and the endurance that no matter what life may throw at him, that he may be grounded in your word. And we as our church family, we're committed to walk this spiritual journey with him. So I pray for his heart. I pray for his mind. May you keep him aside and separated, holy for you until the day you come. And we know that just like Marcus, other young adults will come to the realization to know that you are the way, that you are, you are true, that you are, the, that you are life, Lord. So we are grateful for this opportunity. And, in, and we baptize Marcus in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Everybody, let's say, welcome, Marcus. Marcus, this is your church family welcome you, welcoming you. Now we're going to proceed with a couple that is really special for me. We've been studying the Bible for a couple of months now. These are special people. I will invite to the baptistry Sister Belinda Fisher and also Brother Alfredo Fisher. Um, It is such a blessing to have husband and wife here together performing the holy baptism. Amen? Amen. God instituted marriage in the Garden of Eden. And today, as husband and wife, they are also born again Christians. And I can only say glory be to God because it is such a great blessing. They are eager to know the Adventist message. They want to know it all. They want to know about the health message. They want to know about Ellen White. They want to know about eschatology. They want to know it all. 
And I am grateful because I know that it's been a great journey for Belinda and Alfredo. And we are here and God is receiving you with open arms. And we pray that you would continue not only in your spiritual walk, but also in your relationship as husband and wife to grow in Christ and to continue to be conformed until his stature. So let us pray together and then we are going to go ahead and perform the baptism. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, today we celebrate this spiritual feast. We celebrate new life in you. We celebrate profession of faith in you as our Lord and our Savior. It's been a long journey for both Belinda and Alfredo, Lord. I pray for their hearts. I pray for their marriage. I pray, Lord, that they are covered with the blood of Jesus at this time. That once they go down into the waters, all of their past experience is thrown into the depths of the sea and forgotten. I pray, Lord, that once they come out of, out of the water, they are able to enjoy a new experience in, in you, new life in you. That they are conformed to your truth. That they are able to live by you and to live with you. That they continue to be eager to know and learn about this message of yours. And I long for that day when I will see both Belinda and Alfredo in heaven being our neighbors and celebrating together, walking and eating from the tree of life. So I pray these things in the name of Jesus. And now I baptize them both in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Everybody, let's say welcome Belinda and Alfredo. <laughs> she just said, uh, I am soaking wet. <laughs> But that is the whole point of it, to get rid of all of our sin, right, and be received into newness of life. Saints, these three people are our newest members, our newest babies in the faith. So I will entrust you the responsibility to get to know them, to say hi to them, to learn their names, to show them the way. The Lord has given you a great experience as a Seventh-day Adventist Christian. And now it is your responsibility to share with them. These three folks are, uh, have been coming to our Wednesday night's Bible studies. If you want to learn more about the Bible and our uh, uh, message, you're more than welcome to join us here every Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. And we will continue to rejoice in the Lord. We will continue to rejoice in this Sabbath day. And if you would like to study the Bible with us, at this point in time, I will ask you in the mighty name of Jesus that you can stand for a moment and we will study the Bible together. If that is you, if the Lord is impressing you in your heart that you would like to study with us, can you stand just for a moment and we will uh, uh, find your name and find your number, get in contact with you and we will pray with you. We will study the word with you. Do not be shy. We want to study scripture with you and we are not doing, we're not going to do anything. The Lord and the Holy Spirit will convince you and he will be the one to show you and lead you to all truth. So if we can all stand right now for a moment, we are going to have a word of prayer as we close out our baptism here. Heavenly Father, what a great blessing. We are so thrilled 
We are joyful, Lord. And we just, we just give you the honor and the glory for eternity. Amen. You are a great God. You truly are a great God. We celebrate your person, who, he, who you are. We celebrate your work, what you came to do. And we celebrate what you are still doing for us and with us here in Panama City, Lord. We ask you that you will continue to lead this church. We ask you that you would continue to lead us to all truth. Please take our adoration here this morning. We celebrate our youth. We celebrate babies. We celebrate with hymns, with your word. We celebrate through the, the, the act of baptism, Lord, because you have been good to us. And we love you, we worship you, and we give you our hearts. And we praise your holy name. Now help us enjoy the rest of this Sabbath in your presence. It is in your name that we pray. Amen. Amen. Panama City Saints, you may be seated. God bless you. getting the AV guy up front twice in one day. <laughs> Let us pray. God, as we close out this Global Youth Day, thank you for giving us a beautiful now day to come to church. Thank you for all the people that have participated in this service and those that were able to take a blessing from it. As we leave and go forth this week, keep us all safe, keep us all blessed, and bring us back together next week in anticipation of your soon coming. In your precious most holy name we pray. Amen. If you would remain seated, the deacons will see you out. Wait just a moment, and our new members are going to come as soon as they are ready. And we have a little gift and a little show of appreciation for, for each of them. And so it'll be just a moment until they're ready, and then we'll uh, dismiss. And I want to say thank you at this time. The sound people that take care of all these soundy things and all of these videos and stuff, they do a great job. And usually the only time I remember that they're there is whenever something doesn't work. Okay, we would ask you to come up. And so these are new members in Christ. Welcome you, and we have a special gift for you. And then when we exit, if you want to wait just a minute, we'd all shake your hand as long as you wait for us just for a moment.
Okay, we want to say thank you to all of our church members, and these are our new charges, so keep them in prayer and keep them uh, always in your mind. And we'll have the deacons come at this time and dismiss us. Thank you.